circles, circles, and more circles. In this problem, from the AMC 10 and 12b, let S be the circles, set of circles in the coordinate plane that are tangent to each of the three circles with equations x squared plus y squared equals 4, x squared plus y squared is 64, x minus 5 squared plus y squared is 3. Find the sum of the areas of all circles in S. Hmm. x squared plus y squared equal to 4. If this is the center of a circle, uh, 0, 0, then the radiuses will all be 2. And for the circle here, it's centered at 5, 0, and will have radius of root 3. And for the big circle, it's x squared plus y squared equals 64. So it's going to have a radius of 8. And I'm not going to draw it because it's really going to clutter the diagram. Basically, all the radii of the big circle are 8. Okay, so... Let S be the set of all circles that are tangent to each of the three circles. There are a lot of circles here. So to do this methodically, let's take all the cases. So the first, well, notice how it has to be internally tangent to the big circle. So if you don't know, internally tangent means it's kind of inside the big circle. Like this circle is internally tangent to the big circle, this one. And externally tangent would mean it's touching from the outside. So something like that would be externally tangent. So if it was externally tangent to the outside circle, there's no way it can also be tangent to the smaller circles here and here. And just to be clear here, uh, let's, let's just, just to make sure there's no confusion, that all these circles right here that I'm drawing are the ones that are given in the problem. And then the big one is we're also given in the problem. So the first case is that, I mean, first of all, it has to be internally tangent to the big circle, of course. So the first case is that it's internally tangent to the big circle. And it's also internally tangent to the other two circles. So it's internally tangent to all of the circles. And in that, we have this circle right here. This one right here, as you can see. Oh, sorry, I, I mark in blue the wrong circle. It would be the, the small one here, because in the problem we're given, it's centered at 5, 0 and has radius of root 3 for over there. So this green circle, as you can see here, it's internally tangent to the big blue circle, and it's internally tangent to the two smaller circles. OK, so what is the area of this green circle? Well, what, what is its diameter, first of all? Well, notice how from here to here is 8, and from here to here is 2. So overall, it's 10, the diameter. Right? And you might be wondering, well, how do you know that it's going to be... How do you know that these three points are going to be collinear? So how do you know that, well, this whole length will be the sum of these two lengths? Well, the reason is because you can kind of imagine that these circles are both tangent to another line. And if they're both tangent to this line, then while they both have a 90 degree angle, their circles make with this line, the green one. So if both the circles center make a 90 degree angle with that green line, then, well, then those three points have to be collinear. Because if they're both perpendicular to the same line, they're collinear, of course. So here, here, and then one here. Those are going to be collinear. And that means that this whole length, which is 10, right? Because it's 8 plus 2, that 10 is going to be the diameter of the green circle. And that means radius is 5, so area is 25 pi. Okay, now let's erase this green circle, or maybe let's just leave it there. Okay, what's next? We have, let's, let's look at the red circle and this circle right here. So this circle, it's, it's internally tangent to one of the smaller circles and externally tangent to the other of the smaller circles. Okay, so as you can see here, 
is internally tangent to this circle and externally tangent to this circle. So this is also a valid circle. What is the radius of this circle? Well, just like earlier, we can imagine drawing a line here. This is two, and this is eight. So this total distance from here to here is 10. And we know these three centers will be collinear because remember how the property of tangents is 90 degrees? So it's not possible for them not to be collinear because if you have two points, if we have two points that are perpendicular to the same point on the same segment, as you can see, they have to be collinear because otherwise we would have something wonky like this. So essentially, because if one is perpendicular and there another line is perpendicular to the same line, then those three points are collinear because they form a 180 degree angle right here. So this red circle will have, again, diameter 10. So again, area 25 pi. Cool. Okay, so now we've got some more circles. We've covered the case where it's internally tangent to all three circles, and we've covered the case where it's internally tangent to two circles. What if it's, or there's another case where it's internally tangent to two circles. And let's make it this purple circle right here. This purple circle right here is internally tangent to the this square root three circle. It's externally tangent to this circle right here. And it's internally tangent to, to the big one, of course. So what is the diameter of this purple circle? Similar to earlier, this time we can draw a line right here and see that both of their centers will form a 90 degree angle with it. Both the purple and blue circles will form a 90 degree angle right there. So therefore, those are again collinear, the centers of the circles. And maybe I should just erase it so it becomes a little bit easier to see. But essentially, as you can see here, because we know that this whole radius is 8, and this part right here is 2, then the diameter of the purple circle is 6. So the radius is 3, the area is 9 pi. And like I mentioned earlier, just to review, the three center, or this, this, this center here, this center here, and their tendency point are all collinear because of the perpendicular reason. Okay, so that's 9 pi. Now, finally, let's see. What's next? What's left? We have the case where it's externally tangent to two of the smaller circles, and it has to be internally tangent to the big circle. So this is another blue circle. Okay, so this part is two, and then the whole thing is eight. So, just like earlier, the diameter will be six, and by similar reasons, because of our perpendicular line logic, we know the center, the two centers and tangency point are collinear. So this has diameter six, area nine pi. So, so far we've got 68 pi. But what if it's the opposite orientation? So what I mean by that is these circles are kind of symmetric around the X axis. So for each of these circles that we drew, for example, the blue one that I currently have, we can draw the one below. And for this red one over here, for the red one that you see in the diagram, this one, we can also draw the same exact circle, but it's the opposite orientation by symmetry. And similarly for the green one, we again have the same thing. And I'm not going to draw it because it's going to make the diagram very messy, but essentially you get the idea. If you reflect it over the y-axis, we have a new circle. So we multiply this by 2 to get 136 pi. A really cool problem. And circles, 